Welcome back, automatic knife lovers, switchblade lovers, however you deem yourselves, whatever term you use for this type of knife. I've done a few other 2023 favorite videos, collections, and I felt uh, it was very apropos that I do automatic knives because still... <laughs> The right thumb is out of commission. So what easier knife to use when you can't really use a flipper with your right hand? You can't really use thumb studs for sure, but you might be able to access a button. And we have, what, seven on the table. Pretty much the max of what I acquired this year. They all came out this year to the very best of my knowledge. I, I'm sorry, I'm saying this year, I mean 2023. The previous year, the one that just ended, right? Um, except for one, which has been out for a while. And the reason it's on the table is because this was so generously gifted to the channel by North Code. Ryan at North Code, out of the blue, asked me if I wanted this knife. And I said, are you kidding me? This is an amazing newer edition of the Wraith. I have an older edition of the Wraith uh, that I traded off with somebody. A very nice fellow by the name of Gary, by the way. Um, this one has the uh, Jade Green G10 some people are turned off by it. I happen to like it with the black. Uh, the rest of the knife is all uh, what appears to be integral and may very well be. I believe it is integral, okay? With this um, bolster piece screwed on so that uh, you can get at the internals and the thing can be put together and taken apart. Got that squared off uh, frag pattern uh, steel button. And here I can open it with the left hand, hooray. And it is made of Elmac steel. It's a beautiful knife. It's not the snappiest, but the blade certainly gets out there without any problem. Um, we'll talk about some snappy knives coming up, but um, a gift is a gift. There is no downside to this gift, believe me. This is a high-end quality knife. And uh, I thank Ryan again so much. I thanked him before, and I don't want to sound like I'm gushing, but I'm gushing. It's a beautiful, beautiful knife with, uh, look at that wicked clip, kind of almost a Bowie clip on there. Substantial steel, and yet a very sharp edge. I gave it a little bit of a stropping. It's even better than it was. Uh, so uh, that's the original factory edge, according to Ryan. I'm going to put that one aside. It's been talked about before. In fact, uh, should I mention that all of these knives have independent reviews on my channel? And we're going to get on to one more that is extremely special. This is the invention, the design of uh, Daryl Kasten, also known as D Rocket designs. He has been doing, been going crazy in Ultim in 2023. <laughs> and this was one of the first, I think one of the first, and this is called the Zulu. It is from uh, M390, I believe. Yes, M390. I'm not sure who his OEM is. A lot of times that's not known and that's kind of a secret, but uh, here we have the Zulu. Uh, he also makes a... Uh, I think a drop point version of mix a few different versions of this. I'm not, I think a Warncliffe. I'm not going to go out on a limb and say that I remember that. It is extremely light. It's, I think, in two ounces or less. It's, there's just nothing to it. And Ultim, uh, I've put posts up about Ultim in the past about what a fantastic material it is. It isn't just, you know, something that looks like amber. Uh, and some people are already sick of it. So, you know, I get it. You know, you get the trends going and everybody's doing it. So all the major manufacturers are using Ultim now and a lot of their models. Anyway, uh, action is really nice with a side switch. Uh, the switch is steel, I believe. 
Let's test it for sure. Yeah, switch is steel. Whoop. Either that or I... Well, magnet's getting weak, huh? <laughs> it's got a clip which um, goes into a groove there in the handle. I'm not sure it's reversible only because um, it's sort of offset. So I'm not going to say it's reversible. You would have to remove the the one side panel here after you take the switch off in order to uh, see if we can switch that around. You can see the internals here. Pretty cool. And he has come out with this in a number of different button styles. He's come out with it in uh, like a bronzed aluminum on one side and the Ultima on the other and so forth. If you're looking for a featherweight OTF, and of course, with automatics, you have to know whether or not they're legal in your area, or you may not care. So what can I say? Um, in my state, you can have them, but not carry them. Uh, since I have the use of only one hand, I may actually qualify to carry these because there is an old rule uh, in my state uh, stating that if uh, you had only one arm or one hand or the use of one hand, that you could possess a automatic legally. And I think the other caveat was someone someone who was doing fishing. This was told to me a long time ago in the 80s. I'm not sure it's true or not. Let's move on. Here we have the Babylon A by Maxace. It has the same blade shape as, and I got to unlock it, don't I? Or was it already unlocked? There we go. Same blade shape as the original Babylon button lock, but it is an automatic. And it actually, uh, I've had these apart, not the easiest thing, but there is a three position spring in there. You can put it in three little spots, three little holes, and you can increase or decrease the tension on the blade. I think this one came through kind of a medium. It's not real strong, but it is fairly snappy, okay? If I can get the button. Um, does have a lock, so it'll double lock open, and it'll lock in the closed position. Uh, blue carbon fiber, blue and gray carbon fiber with a very nice titanium clip, not deep carry and not switchable. And uh, this is not an integral. And you can see the seam down the back, but it's pretty nicely constructed with those holes there and quite light for a knife of its size, where the blade on this one is coming in at like uh, at least three and three quarters, maybe a bit longer, closer to four inches. Still got the hole there from the original uh, button lock. And the steel on this one is M390. You can see the branding there, kind of light branding, but uh, large. Uh, Babylon A M390 2023. So there, Max Ace tends to come out with a lot of duplicates of knives that look. I was just telling him today in a post that the, the Archer and the Neptune and the Medusa all kind of are similar OTF knives. I do have the Archer, and it's not on the table. It's kind of a budgety knife. It's not bad. Uh, just kind of ran out of space here, and I'm going to address what I feel to be you know, the, the, the better or more interesting ones. Uh, again, not that the arch, not that the archer is a bad knife. I was interested enough to pick one up and wait for it to come three weeks from China, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm going to go down the line here. This is the Launch 15 by Kershaw. It's unique in that it has an inlaid piece of micarta here light tan micarta. It has a center button rather than an offset button. And there's no lock on it. So those of you that don't like the, the secondary lock, there you go. Um, it is does have a switchable deep carry short clip. And it is from MagnaCut and it is made in the USA. There's the flag right there. It's an internal design. That's what that little logo there means. Uh, there's your Magna Cut branding, and uh, not much on the other side except a small Kershaw. And uh, it's a spear point, kind of a bayonet grind, really, we'll call that, F quite sharp. 
Uh, grind about two thirds of the way up. Nice jimping there, holds well. Uh, about a three and a half inch blade. Trying not to measure everything because it ain't easy. Uh, yeah, three and a half inch blade, which is decent. I like knives that are at least three and a half inches. Some exceptions, I do have some three and a quarter or three inch blades, sub three inch blades, but um, nice uh, universal kind of um, grip on this one. Holds well. It does hold well. You know, it feels comfortable in the hand. You know, you can hold it uh, pical, right? No problem. No, I'm not sure how strong the button lock is, but uh, it is uh, even in the open position, negligible, negligibly, negligibly. <laughs> it has a negligible rise above the surface of the handle. Uh, so how much pressure does it take to close it? you got to push it in pretty deep, pretty deep. Yeah, and um, as with most of the Kershaw launch series, it is snappy. It is, come on, very snappy. Yeah, take my word for it. It's snappy, folks. So that is the Launch 15, came out in 2023. Jumped on it as soon as, uh, by the way, uh, those of you that don't know, White Mountain does have an automatic uh, knife site. It, you can find it in the menu at the top of their regular site. And uh, they offer a, a fair amount of auto knives. Let's move on because it's going to take a while. Here we have the Doug Ritter and Hogue collaboration. And uh, this is the, why don't I know the name? RSK Auto. I thought of it as soon as I turned the camera off. <laughs> it's the RSK Auto. Beautiful milled G10 with this sunburst sort of pattern on it. Does have the double lock. Um, never sure which is the uh, unlocked position. That is the lock position. I've been trying to leave them off, lock off, so I can do that. Very snappy knife, and this one is, yes, in Magna Cut. They are making the manual version in Magna Cut, although uh, they don't have the large one yet, as far as I know. Um, someone asked if they're making the auto in a smaller version. I think they might. Uh, it is a folded over clip, we're going to call it, not deep carry. It is switchable to the other side, and Hogue always uses these brass inserts for all their holes, which is a great thing. So yes, left or right hand carry. Haven't set this one up for left hand carry for me for the time being. I am a lefty, by the way, but um, because the, the left hand has had its issues over the years, I've transferred a lot of function to the right, but then when I got the surgery on the right, I had to transfer it temporarily back to the left. Crazy world. I think I'll just end up amb ambidextrous. Uh, there's a big Doug Ritter logo there and CPM Magna Cut, MC for Magna Cut, I believe. Uh, it's a solid knife. It's got his typical kind of uh, Griptilian-ish um, blade design. It's kind of a takeoff on that. Uh, Doug does excellent down-to-earth usable designs. I like it. And it is lightweight. It's got uh, hidden, it's got, I believe got nested steel liners. Let's see if I can get the flashlight out here. Everything's a little more challenging these days. There we go. Without cutting myself. Yeah. Well, what it is, yeah, it's uh, mostly the G10 with uh, steel inserts. And you might ask yourself, is it solid? Uh, absolutely solid. There's no lock rock, no blade play on this guy. Beautiful Magna Cut. Uh, nicely done, functional, everyday carry sort of auto, if you can carry autos. Moving on down. Got two left. And here, I'm going to have to look again. <laughs> oh, man, I'm going to have to look again. It is the Counter-Strike. I was thinking it was the Compound, <clears throat> which is another one that I have, which is, has that kind of wacky uh, uh, trapezoidal sort of shape to it. This has some of that too, but it's more rounded. I don't know if you can see that in the hand. 
uh, very light, deep carry clip, aluminum on one side, and um, kind of a G-mascus, they call it, at Hogue on the other side cover. I've had it apart to adjust it. Um, I don't recommend you do it unless you know what you're doing, but there is a way to make the tension on the button a little lighter. You just have to make sure that you don't make it so light that it's going to fail when you try to open it. Um, what they use in this one, CPM 20 CV, great steel, comparable to M390. Um, this one's in the Tonto, which I happen to like. I've got so many double edge uh, OTFs, uh, I figured I'd get a Tonto. And the action, perfect, no fail. And it's just about right, you know, so it's not so easy. It's going, you're going to just going to slosh out there. But uh, what you basically do is take the cover off. I ain't going to show you today for certain. And you take the spring and you kind of grab it from both ends, the main spring, and you kind of give it a gentle stretch. And then maybe you give it another little gentle stretch. Um, and that will lessen the tension on that button. But you can see that button still got plenty of tension to it and about a medium throw it's not too long a throw um, beautiful everyday carry again uh, out the front uh, you can switch that uh, clip by just removing that screw and swinging it to the other side it came with a humongous kind of sharpish uh, glass breaker similar to what you see on a lot of the microtech uh, out the fronts. Uh, this thing, I don't know that we really need. It's for a lanyard. It kind of gets in the way, kind of sticks you once in a while. It's this rounded over thing. Uh, could probably, you could remove that and grind it off. Uh, might not be a bad idea if uh, it bothered you a lot. I'm going to leave it on. I don't like to mod things too heavily. But since I had the chance to um, take that glass breaker off and put the screw in, I did it. Hogue. Counter-Strike. And these come in a lot of different uh, designs. They come in the all aluminum and they come in a couple other uh, G-Mascus uh, flavors. I'm going to put that right there. That's the Hogue. Finally, I would say my OTF Grail of the Year. And uh, this guy is the Glycon. I hemmed and hawed and looked at it for a while. Um, and finally decided, you know, I do like it enough and they are supposed to come out with covers. It's come out since in a, like a, um, a, a latest gen with different materials here. I think they might've used a carbon fiber or a different color titanium. This is titanium. This is aluminum. Um, it's got that triway, I think they call it, uh, actuating button. Very smooth. I opted for the, uh, I guess they call it uh, bead blast uh, serrated. And the only way they uh, serrate it is on both sides. And it's not bad because for smooth cutting, you do have a good amount of smooth edge here. And you got some on the top. Uh, definitely, it's still going to penetrate. Um, the unique thing they did with the Glycon was they give you this um, thumb platform here, which I like. You seldom see that on a double edge, unless the top edge of the double edge is not uh, sharpened, which means it would be a bayonet grind. So this is kind of a bayonet grind. Um, in that little carved in, milled in space, there is the very faint Microtech logo. So it's not too heavily branded. Um, this one is strictly an M390, not the M390 MK that they've been using on the ram locks. Full-size knife, uh, three and three-quarter inches it. Uh, um, let's see. Yeah, three and three-quarter inch, we'll call it. Might be a bit longer, technically speaking, but it's a good size knife. It's as big as the combat troodon. Nice work here on the, uh, the backspacer. Kind of doesn't need a backspacer really. It, it, it's got a lot of little parts here. You know, you got the cover going on here, you got the cover going on there. And I would like to see him come out with it uh, in replaceable covers. 
or have some replaceable covers available. I haven't seen them yet. Probably somebody's doing some custom stuff already. Nice titanium clip. I believe it's titanium. Let's see if I can not drop. Yeah. And um, just a detail-rich OTF knife. Look at the holes here. Here's something I can use. <laughs> There you go. Something I can use that surgical wrap for. There you have my seven for 2023 automatic knives. Let me know what you think. And don't forget to give this vid a like and a subscribe. I'll be back soon.